Hi folks, Peter Lawn here. Today I wanted to provide an introduction and walkthrough of my Creature Builder Excel workbook for No Man's Sky. This tool uh, that I created in Microsoft Excel uses Visual Basic coding to read the game creature files and allow you to manage and change pet attributes and export the changes to your save file in the game. You can get the latest version of the Creature Builder workbook, as well as tons of pet template files and pictures from my GitHub page at the URL shown. In this part one video, I will run down how to use this utility so you can start building your own library of pet creatures within the game. So what do you need to use this tool? You obviously need the latest version of No Man's Sky, the game. I've geared this tutorial for PC users. This tool is a Microsoft Excel macro enabled workbook. So you're going to need Microsoft Excel. It has been designed with the latest version of Excel that comes with Office 365. However, it might work on earlier versions. You will also need the No Man's Sky Save Game Editor by Goat Fungus. This tool allows us to import and export the pet section of your save files. You can get this software at the following URL. This video is not designed to show you how to install or use the Save Game Editor software and assumes you have some familiarity working with it. Uh, you also need a JPEG editor and viewing utility to save and view your creature image files. All right, so let's have a, a look uh, at how to download and install the tool. Go to the GitHub URL shown here, and then make sure that you're on the code tab up here in the left-hand corner. And get the latest release by clicking on the latest button on the right-hand side of the page. Then click on the zip file to download the package within your browser. After you've downloaded the files from GitHub, you can pretty much install the files anywhere on your computer and the main folder name uh, can be anything you like. The folder and file structure below the main folder needs to be maintained, however, as they are shown in the zip file. So in my case, I'll just drag and drop the top root folder from the zip file to my desktop where I can access it easily. You'll see there are several files and folders in the package, so I'll describe them here. The EXML folder is where I store the uh, EXML files that describe the attributes for each pet. These would have been extracted from the latest No Man's Sky game files for the current release. Next, we have the PICS folder, which is where we can store generic pictures of particular animals. These are the pics which describe how a pet will look anatomically, but they lack associated pet text template files that describe their body uh, shape, color, etc. We'll talk more about this later. Next folder is the templates folder, which is where all the main creature types subfolders are stored. Uh, each creature type folder contains pictures and template text files to store pet information you discover in the game. Finally, there's a main Excel workbook file that must reside in your main folder as well as some support files. The tool interface. So the tool is just a Microsoft Excel workbook with a single worksheet with a couple of macro buttons up at the top and some customized columns to the right over here that store some data for the program to use. This creature cell ID in the upper left hand side of the sheet is the currently loaded creature from the game EXML files. The area here to the left will populate uh, creature attribute data when we select a different creature. Don't change any data on this sheet as it is used by the underlying program. To load any creature EXML file onto the sheet, simply highlight any cell under the creature ID column and click the load EXML button to populate the data area with the creature attribute information. The cow creature is one of the most diverse pets out there, and if you load it, you'll see a fair amount of attribute data just for the cows. Whereas if I select the bird creature, you can see that there's a lot less creature attribute combinations that are possible. The load EXML button is simply used for design purposes as all the heavy lifting is done with the config form button here. Clicking on the config form button will pop open the main window for working with the pet information. When you initially open this window, it will read the currently loaded pet uh, data in the data sheet uh, on the custom form and it loads the pet information parsed into various adjustable fields. This text area to the left is how the pet information is stored in the JSON format in the save game editor. More on this later, but if you make any changes uh, to the settings on the right hand side of this form, you need to click the update pet 
bu uh, file button down here and under and the underlying program will update this JSON text to the correct format so it's ready for exporting to the game files. This area to the right of the JSON text includes all the physical characteristics of the pet including the major family this pet belongs to, what we call the creature ID. And by the way, you can load any creature from this dropdown as well. Uh, you can change the size of the animal, uh, custom name uh, the animal if you want in this cell. Uh, the description uh, descriptor section here that describes the physical attributes of the pet, including head, body, and tail shapes, as well as accents like fins, horns, eyes, etc. You'll notice that the attributes are tiered from 1 to 18 as you go down, meaning lower number attributes uh, at the top will dictate what selections are possible for the higher number selections below. This hierarchy is defined in the EXML files uh, pulled from the game and are fixed and cannot be altered. For each animal type, you can only make certain combinations of body parts work together. So trying to have a cow with a fish head, for example, would not work. Too bad because that would be kind of cool. Um, coloring is controlled by the creature seed here. There's also a number of other seeds shown uh, below that influence various asp aspects of the physical shape of the pet. I will have to admit, uh, I'm not completely knowledgeable on what some of these settings do, but I, I think that you can think of a seed as a large random number that the game interprets to generate the look of the pet. The unique ID number here is a random number that is assigned to the pet and should be unique for each pet you create. You will see a bunch of create buttons next to the parameters in this section, which allows you to generate random numbers to fill these fields and test combinations. The panel on the right breaks down the behavioral traits of our pet uh, to include a number of adjustable sliders to apply different pet behaviors. Now I'm going to show you a, how to get a six-legged cat into your game file as a pet. Let's load up a creature file by selecting the drop down under the creature ID and select six leg cat. The program will load the appropriate data onto our workbook in the background and pre-fill all the data in the config form and also bring up the picture of the default creature if a picture file was found. I want to draw your attention to this pet image form and how it works. When you change the creature ID or any physical attribute drop downs on the config form here, the program will first look in the templates folder for the pet image and an associated template text file that matches the current selection. If it doesn't find a specific template, it looks in the pix folder for a generic picture of the physical look of the creature. And if it doesn't find that, it will display this no image file available, meaning there has no, been no picture cataloged for this selection. Also note that the message below the pic here, uh, which will provide a clue as to where the program is finding the pic. If it says generic image shown, seeds not available, it is grabbing the image from the pix folder and although the creature will physically look like this image, its coloring in game will not match what's shown in the picture. If it says found template file, um, it is grabbing the image and template text file from the templates folder and the pet will look identical to the image including all coloring. I'm going to use this template pet I have found and insert him into the No Man's Sky save game. Let's load up the current pictures template text info onto the form by clicking the copy to form button here. Um, it'll give you uh, uh, all the information you need on that pet onto the form and we're going to give it a new name for this particular uh, pet and we'll call him Rotten Ronnie. Remember um, that if you change any of these attributes in this area, you need to click the update pet file button down below here to transport uh, the changes to the pet template text in this window on the left. Now that I've registered the changes, click the export button to copy the pet info from this text section into the Windows clipboard. Let's launch the No Man's Sky Save Game Editor Utility and load up one of my No Man's Sky Save Game files so I can show you where your pet information resides. First off, because we are working in the Save Game Editor and specifically in advanced mode and dealing with the raw JSON file format, it's important to state that you should be backing up your save files uh, before using this software. I will note that I've been working with this utility for over 6,000 hours of gameplay and have yet to screw up a save, but it can happen. So let's start the save game editor and select the save game slot from the dropdown. 
uh, go to the edit menu and select edit raw JSON. You will see the JSON editor window pop open and on the left navigation window pane we will click on the little plus sign to expand the player state data section. Just near the top in, the, in under this uh, section you'll see a uh, subsection called pets which we will expand. We'll see the 18 slots associated with the companion pets you have in the game numbered 0 through 17. This is where all the pets information is stored and if you click any of these numbered slots the information about that pet will be populated in the right window pane here. So to get our six-legged cat into the game <clears throat> I need to choose a particular um, pet slot for him to go into. If we flip back to No Man's Sky and look at um, our current pet summary, uh, this will be slot 0, then 1, 2, 3, etc. We'll flip back to the save editor and I want the cat to go into the first slot. So we need to overwrite pet position 0 in the save game editor um, with what's in the current Windows clipboard. With slot 0 selected in the left pane window, click anywhere on the right pane here and hit Control plus A key to select all information in it. Now hit Control plus V key to paste our exported cat info from the uh, Windows clipboard to this slot 0 section. It will overwrite the contents we've selected. Close the window and click Yes on the pop-up dialog to save the changes to the file. Then on the main tab of the save editor, click the Save Changes button to make the final save. When we flip back to No Man's Sky and reload our auto save, our pet should be in the game. If you didn't get the intended results, you might have put the pet in the wrong save file, so make sure you're working on the correct save file. There's another way to use this tool to get a particular template pet file into your No Man's Sky save game. On the config form window, we can directly load a pet text file info onto the config form using the file open button here in the top left of the window. There's a particular diplo that I like, um, so I can change directories and go to the um, triserver tops directory, because that's where diplos uh, reside. Um, and pick my favorite Stripe Diplo called Spike. Once again, we click the Export button to get Spike's info into the Windows clipboard. Flip to the Save Game Editor and place him into Pet Slot 1 this time. Control A to select the data existing, then Control V to paste Spike's info. Close, click the Yes to save, and then save again on the main page. And let's flip to the game to see Spike in action. And there he is. Um, that's it for now, folks. Uh, we'll continue later in part two video, which will describe how to catalog a new pet discovered during your galactic adventures and how you can save them to your library for use um, in other saves that you have. Thanks for watching, everyone, and keep safe, travelers.